Last Night in Soho. So, Last Night in Soho. This is a new film from Edgar Wright, the man behind the Cornetto trilogy, you know, Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, the other one, World's End. He also did Baby Driver. Uh, and this film stars Thomas Inn McKenzie, Anya Taylor-Joy, and Matt Smith. Now, it's kind of hard to gauge what this movie's about just based on the trailers. Uh, it, you know, you can get a slight idea, but it's hard to really explain what the film would be about if someone was saying, oh, what's that about that you're going to go see? You'd be a bit like, I don't really know, to be honest. The plot follows our main character, Ellie. She's played by Mackenzie, and she is a student, a new student at a university in London where she's studying fashion. More specifically, it's in Soho, and she's moved up from Cornwall. So it's quite a big change for her. It's quite a new surrounding. It's not what she's used to, and it's people that she's not really used to. Now, when she's there, she mysteriously starts to get, like, visions of the 1960s, and it's like she's in the 1960s. And in the 1960s, she comes across Sandy and John, who are played by Anya Taylor-Joy and Matt Smith. And whilst it seems all magical and amazing to Ellie, things are not what they seem, of course. The more she explores this world, the deeper she goes into the rabbit hole, the more it sort of becomes part of her day-to-day -day life and things start to unravel and big truths and secrets are revealed. Now, I won't say anything else about the plot because anything else would be giving it away. Even now, I feel like I've said too much. I haven't really, but, you know, it's one of them. There's not much to say in terms of the plot. I don't think the plot is what's going to convince someone to go and see it. I think the trailer is enough, and you look at that and you think, oh, okay, and then you see the cast, and you see the man who's making the movie, and you think, yeah, this this seems like a good recipe here. Now, of course, this is a big switch up for Wright, it feels like, because he did the Cornetto trilogy and Baby Driver. The Cornetto trilogy are just comedy movies, you know, they're, they are hilarious, some of the best British comedy movies ever. And then, of course, Baby Driver, which, regrettably, I, I have to say, I, haven't, I still haven't seen yet. It's just, I hear it's great, I just haven't seen it. But, you know, from what I have seen of that movie, you know, it's, it's kind of stylish, I guess, probably has some comedy elements in there, but, you know, it's more of a sort of action -y movie, I guess. But, you know, none of these films are similar to what Last Night in Soho is. This is what I regard as a thriller, sort of a mystery, you know, that sort of thing. It does have those elements of humour in there as, a, as well. You know, typical Edgar Wright humour where it is actually funny. And along with his trademark humour and, you know, great writing, it does have the trademark editing, which is sublime. It's not edited in a funny way, such as the way, you know, Shauna then Hot Fuzz are, where it's like looks like quick cuts and like the, you know, sound effect, you know, just for someone getting milk out of the fridge, say. But it is really sublime editing, the way it's all pieced together, the camera movements. It is really, really cleverly shot well filmed and well edited. Now, I've got to say a lot of films and TV shows struggle to nail what like a teenager or a young adult is like, you know, like the way they speak, the things they'd actually say, you know, like when you watch a soap drama or something, you know, it's the way kids and teenagers are in that, it's just, you just watch it and think no one actually speaks like that. But in here, he, he seemed to actually get it right. Like it was funny because it sounded like something that a teenager or someone at university would say. Obviously, I'm kind of around that age, you know, You know, I, I would be at uni or I would finish uni, whatever. But, you know, I ain't far off it. And you could, it just feels like they got it right here. It feels like genuine. It feels like these are actual students. You know, it doesn't feel like it's all scripted. It doesn't feel like they're saying things that you think a student or someone of that age would just never say that. The performances were really, really good. Mackenzie was, was excellent. Uh, I've never seen her in anything else before. Not that I know of, at least. Uh, and she was outstanding. And I, I can't wait to see her in more stuff, to be honest, because she, she felt really unique, you know? I haven't really seen a performance like that before. You know, she's just a unique actress with a unique voice as well. I found that's kind of what stood out about her. And uh, she really nailed this role. You know, she's someone who's outside of a comfort zone, who's kind of shy because she's, you know, been living in Cornwall and now she's living in, you know, the busiest uh, city in England. She portrayed that that shy, that shy girl very, very well to the point where it's like, is this just what she's like in real life? You know, kind of like what Michael Cera seems like he's like in real life. Um, but no, he's, uh, she, she nailed it. She put in a really good performance and, you know, she, you can tell she really dedicated herself to this character. She got it spot on. Now, Anya Taylor-Joy was great as... She just always is. You know, I've seen her in, I think, like, three or four movies. This is probably the third or fourth movie I've seen her in now. And she's always just, 
she's good. She, it's like she's always the standout performer a lot of the time. It's hard to say with this because, you know, Mackenzie gets a little bit more screen time and, um, you know, Mackenzie was really, really good. But Andy Taylor Joy is always memorable. She always puts in a memorable performance. She's always just stand out with what she does and she kind of showed off her talents here a bit you know with like some singing and some dancing and, and that sort of thing she showed that she's a good all-rounder you know it's like they say like a lot of these people in the in the industry you know if they can if they can act and they can probably sing they can probably dance they can probably write as well you know they can they can do all these things many talents and Anya Taylor-Joy showed that here. Matt Smith was very very good in here as well he was different from what we're used to seeing. I know him best from Doctor Who. I know he's been in The Crown as well. Both roles are a well-speaking, you know, a well-speaking gentleman. In this, that's what I thought he was going to be, but he was actually a bit of a Cockney, you know, a bit of a Londoner, you know, a bit of a lad, uh, you know, but back in the 60s. And I thought it was good. I really did, actually. It was nice to see him take on something a little bit different, a different sort of role. And I thought he nailed it. It was nice to see him play this sort of cockney cockney guy rather than, you know, someone who's all polite and, you know, is going to save the day. Another performance as well, Michael, uh, I hope I'm saying that, a, a Jow, a Jow, I, I'm not really, I hope I'm saying that right, but he was good in here too. He had a slightly smaller role than the, than the main three, but he was, he was good. His performance felt real. And yeah, like I said, he nailed the whole teenager Student university thing. Thought he was excellent. And in general, just all the characters were likable, despite, you know, the changes they go through, despite things you learn and truths being revealed to the point where you're like, oh my god, this person's maybe not who I thought they were, but they're all still very likable. The cat wanted to uh, disturb the video. Look. Purr into the mic. I know you want to. No. But anyway, yeah, the plot, as it, obviously, as the film goes on, it, it does unravel, and... It unravels very well. It's very well paced, which makes it intriguing and it really keeps you invested because you're very curious about the mystery behind all of this and how it's going to turn out, you know, what the truth is behind it all. But of course, as with all thriller type movies, it's very dependent on the twists and the surprises. It's dependent on that on that big outcome and the little things you learn across the way. And I would say the twists were hard to predict, to be fair. You know, they weren't ones that I actually saw coming. Sometimes I had an idea in my head, like, oh, I wonder if this is that, right? But it wasn't. You know, whatever I guessed in my head was wrong. So that's good. You know, it means it wasn't predictable. It means you are actually surprised when you learn these things. You know, I can't say it's the most, like, outstanding twists and turns for the plot. You know, I can't be like, whoa, that's crazy. I... But I didn't see them coming you know, and they didn't feel cheap, it didn't feel like a case of like, okay, he's written a really great movie here, but he's not sure what the twist is going to be at the end, so he's just, you know, thought of something up real quick, it felt like he had the, you know, he knew what the whole thing was from the start, and that's how he wove it into the plot throughout, and so when you do learn the truth about things, it makes sense as to all the other things that have just happened throughout the movie, it's not a case of like, so how does that linked to that why did that happen why was that thing it's like oh that explains everything that i've just seen in the past like hour and a half i gotta say the film was very delicately woven together you know and on top of that great performances great dialogue great style great editing and surprising twists you know what more can you really ask for from a mysterious sort of thriller movie like this you you really can't ask for much more this is an outstanding original movie when was the last time we really had an original movie, you know? It's, it feels like it's been a while. It feels like we don't really get them as much these days. And when we do, they're usually just hot trash. So this was a great original movie. Edgar Wright has done it again. He continues to just come up with something new, something fresh. And it always lands. Like, it always lands. So, you know, Edgar Wright, wherever he pulls out a bag next time, I'm all in for it. Now, I highly, highly recommend you guys watch this movie. I, I think... It, a lot of people are going to enjoy this. I think it's a very sort of inclusive movie. I don't think it appeals to one audience more than another. I think it's just a good film that a lot of people are going to enjoy. A lot of people are going to have a good time with. Maybe they won't enjoy it as much as others. You know, someone will think, yeah, it was all right. Yeah, nothing wrong with it. And some people are like, whoa, really good. Me? I thought it was pretty damn good. It's certainly uh, stayed on my mind. And uh, I had a good time with this movie. You will too. Last Night in Soho gets a 9 out of 10. Thank you 
very much for watching. Uh, the movie are sort of picking up a bit now you know we've got like uh, eternal soon although i'm not hearing great things we've got a lot november's a busy month for movies same with december so yeah movie reviews will be coming thick and fast i'm sure but uh, in the meantime goodbye for now see you in the next one